This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, to a new move by President Obama. Um, we end today's show with a new push by the White House to support bipartisan prison reform, this time by reducing punishments for nonviolent crimes. On Thursday, President Obama granted clemency to 46 prisoners, including 14 who face life without parole. Many of the commutations went to crack offenders, including one African-American man who's 84 years old and the mother of Denver Broncos wide receiver, Demarius Thomas. President Obama has now commuted 89 sentences, including 22 drug offenders who were granted release earlier this year. In eight others in 2014. He's expected to call for more fairness in the criminal justice system when he speaks today at the annual convention of the NAACP. This Thursday, he'll become the first president to visit a federal prison when he tours the El Reno facility in Oklahoma. For more, we go to Washington, D.C., to Cynthia Rosebury, director of the Clemency Project 2014. Her organization helps train lawyers to file clemency petitions for nonviolent drug offenders. Some of those petitions were among those granted Thursday. And in Chicago, we're joined by Reynolds Wintersmith, who once faced life in prison for selling crack, but was granted a new beginning in 2014, when President Obama commuted his sentence. Um, Winter Smith was just 17 in 94 when he was arrested. It was his first offense. He's now a restorative justice counselor at CCA Academy, a high school in Chicago. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! In Washington, D.C., uh, let's begin, Cynthia Rosebury, with you. Talk about the people who were just granted clemency. Sure. Many of them were convicted under draconian drug laws. Um, and I would say that Clemency Project 2014 is not limited to drug offenders, but most of those laws have changed now. So uh, this initiative gave hope to people who never thought they'd be reunited with their families, who were given life sentences or very long sentences for nonviolent offenses. Now, talk about the significance of what President Obama is doing. And did you work with the White House and choosing the names of the people who would get clemency? No, we're wholly separate from the White House. We are an initiative of the American Bar Association, the American Civil Liberties Union, Families Against a Mandatory Minimum, National Public and Community Defenders, and the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. So we work wholly independently of the White House, uh, but we screen applicants. We have more than 30,000 now to see if they appear to qualify under the president's initiative. And then we send those petitions over to the pardon attorney. Reynolds Wintersmith, tell us your story, um, having once faced life in prison uh, for selling crack. Um, but talk about what the clemency that President Obama granted you, or the commutation of your sentence, what it means. Well, to me, what it means, it gave me another, another chance at life to build upon uh, this part of my life in the presence. You know, I'm thankful for it. It made me realize that you know, even when we have the possibility of failure in front of us, that doesn't mean that we should give up hope. We should continue to strive, you know, make it easier for a person who wants to give you a second chance. And I'm, I'm thankful for it. Mm. Can you talk about the sentencing for nonviolent drug offenders like yourself? Yes. Well, first, I would like to say that I believe in law and order. I believe in structure. So I understand that the effects that it had on the community, on the lives of the people. But far as sentencing, when you come before a judge and he pass out a sentence to you, the only thing that you will hope for is to have a fairness in it, a balance. And a lot of times with the drug sentences, you know, there's no balance. When I got sentenced in 1994, November, it was no extraordinary circumstances that they could bring up because of the sentencing guidelines. They were mandatory at the time. So it was just numbers computed and implemented, and I was given a sentence of life in 40 years for a count one conspiracy and then a count four that was on the conspiracy. So, I mean, with this new criteria that President Obama has set forth for clemency, it has made it possible for people to reach forward, you know, to believe that they can have another chance. As we all know, that the backlog of clemency positions runs into tens of thousands. Uh, Reynolds, how did you get the clemency? You'd already been in jail for, what, like 18 years? Yes. Well, the process began long before I even filed paperwork. I worked for a lady in the education department. Her name was Janice Feaster. I was a tutor. And, uh, you know, we had dialogue. And uh, a guy, Pryor Reed, 
President Bush had pardoned him. He had a life sentence. He had been in prison for eight years. And uh, so when we said, when she told me what happened with him, because he worked with us as a leadership library clerk, she told me that, why don't you file for clemency? Your story is a different kind of story. And, you know, at the time, you know, facing all the things from my own past and still being held accountable for it, you know, it was hard for me to see why would they give me other, another chance. You know, I had faced issues in we prison, such seconds. as classes. Okay. And uh, so it, it was a process. I'm glad that I had a great support group. And then I had an attorney, my angel Cody, that said, yes, she would help me. Well, we will continue to follow what happens this week with President Obama being the first sitting president to visit a prison, uh, that in Oklahoma. Reynolds Wintersmith and Cynthia Roseberry, thanks so much for being with us. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Nermeen Sheikh, Steve Martinez, Sam Alcoff, Hani Massoud, Robbie Karen, Dina Guster, Amy Littlefield. Special thanks to Julie Crosby, Elizabeth Press. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.